Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we are talking with Christopher Brown. And Christopher is a CEO for a company called Bright Mosaic. And Bright Mosaic are a behavioral speech uh, and occupational therapy center for people with autism. So Christopher, tell me a little bit more about your business and uh, what kind of opportunities there will be for people to come work with you. Sure. So we started in Denton, Texas. That's where we have two clinics currently operating. Um, you know, we, it was just a few people and I, we started this from the ground up. Um, I was myself a registered behavior technician for about seven years. So I know what it's like for the position we're currently looking for. Um, and yeah, just in general, we try to do we try to do things a little differently from most therapy centers. Uh, we have a huge emphasis on life skills, going on field trips. Uh, we have large outdoor spaces with playgrounds, gardens. Um, yeah, we just try to try to make it a fun place to come to. Um, you know, there are some some therapy centers out there that have more of a clinical feel, and that's fine. I think there some kids thrive in that kind of environment, but we try to have more of a homey type of feel. Um, but yeah, we've been open for almost five years now and we're growing. You know, we, we've seen a lot of kids come in with extreme behaviors and, um, you know, physical aggression and very low skills and you know work with them over the course of a couple of years and now they're successfully and kind of on a bittersweet note you know they've left our program and they're doing really well in public schools so yeah we're just trying to do as much as we can under one roof that's why we're doing the behavior speech and occupational so that parents don't have to commute from place to place um, and we also sprinkle in some in-home therapy where that's um, for our clinic kids you know they'll come to the clinic most of the week and then we'll supplement that with some in-home um, now for fort worth and the fact that we're spreading across the dfw we're starting with strictly just in-home and eventually you know if we get enough interest in a particular area then we'll open another clinic but for now, we're just focusing on the in-home, um, which I have also done, you know, my fair share of that when I was in RBT. And it's, it's interesting. It's a lot different from the clinic model, but, you know, you get a pretty unique view into the child's life and, you know, the culture that's at home. So that's a, that's a really, really interesting experience to be there with the whole family unit. Sure. Tell me a little. So we're dealing with patients that uh, that are probably in varying areas on the on the spectrum. Correct. Yeah, definitely. You know, we we serve kids that are um, considered severe, and you know what that looks like is physical aggression. You know, maybe they'll harm themselves. We call that self injurious behavior. Uh, we have kids who run away. <laughs> Um, we have, you know, and then, and the skill acquisition side of things, um, maybe they don't speak at all, or, uh, they are unable to recognize simple patterns. They can't hold a crayon or a pencil at well enough to even, you know, trace the simplest of designs. So I would consider that on the severe end of the spectrum. Okay. And then we've moderate, you know it's, it's just not usually that bad. Um, you know, it's, you'd be able to notice that the child is on the spectrum. Um, but typically they're verbal and typically they do have some of those foundational skills that they would need in school. And, and then they'll have like a lot of extra trouble with the socializing part of things. Sure. And then with the mild or you know, otherwise some people call them high functioning. Um, that's where they're just going to have a little so problems with social nuances and, and things like that. So we, we cover the full spectrum okay. and we 
whoever we're hiring for the position, you know, we'll let them know up front that you would be working with this client and this client. And these are the types of behaviors that we see. These are the types of skill deficits that we see. So are you comfortable working with this type of child? So let's talk a little bit um, practically about the job itself. So, you know, who would your ideal candidate be in terms of qualifications and uh, experience, how much they need, things like that? Yeah, uh, so we don't always require experience with, with behavior therapy specifically. Um, it is preferred. In fact, it's preferred that you already have your registered behavior technician certification. Um, and, and to get that certification, it's really not too bad. Uh, you take a 40 hour online course and that course is usually about, you know, from start to finish, you're gonna end up spending about $300 for that certification. Um, but yeah, we don't require that. Um, you know, we'll take people who, who have worked with kids or especially if they have experience just working with special needs kids at a camp or in a school setting. Um, but yeah, like to us, the more important thing is having soft skills. And what I mean by soft skills, um, I mean, just being good with kids, being playful, um, being able to get down on their level and engage with them being patient, you know, these are things that employers can't really teach very well. Right. It's, it's almost more of a personality trait uh, that we really look for. So I'd, I'd prefer to have somebody who's just naturally good with children and good with other people. And then we can teach you um, through that online course and, and then also just on-site training. I'd rather teach you the more specific industry skills later on. Okay. So, so if somebody, so somebody conceivably could come to you with just the right sort of uh, personality and maybe a minimal amount of experience working with, with children uh, and you would train them from there, correct? We would, you know, some of that comes down to parent preference. So let's say we have a client who wants to start services in Fort Worth and sometimes this happens, they'll be adamant about that person being an RBT and having at least a year of experience. So in that case, we're going to abide by the parents' wishes. Of course. There are a lot of families who are more open and flexible to experience levels. And so, yeah, it just depends on how well the interview goes. If, if you just have a little bit of experience working at a summer camp with kids, but you interview very well, and um, you know, you seem eager to learn, yeah. then that's something we would consider. But to be honest, you know, if we had two candidates who interviewed equally well and one of them has experience in the field or has that RBT certification and the other doesn't, then obviously we're gonna favor the person with experience. Okay, and is there, is there a minimum age or high school diploma requirement? High school diploma is the minimum requirement. Yes, you don't have to have any college experience. You know, that does, that's another thing that kind of sets you ahead if you do have um, a degree, especially if you have a degree in a field related to humanities, you know, psychology, philosophy, something like that, um, or even education, that would be nice. But yeah, at the bare minimum, you have to have a high school diploma or equivalent. So you can have a GED. And be 18? Yes, 18. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, about what kind of shifts they would work and what the job would pay and benefits, things like that. Sure, so as far as shifts, that's gonna depend on the client that we need you to work with. So we're always upfront about that. Hey, we've got this client and this client. So combined, that's gonna be a 30 hour work week. Um, and, you know, we map out that schedule and work around the availability of whoever it is. So, yeah, that'll be a lot of that will be handled in the interview process. So we'll ask, you know, how many hours are you available a week? And if the candidate says, I'm free Monday through Friday, you know, eight to five. 
And then, you know, if we have a client that we're trying to pair that applicant with who is only available after school, which is typically like 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., then we would just say, hey, would you be okay with that type of availability? Could you do Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m.? And if the applicant says no, then, you know, that's fine. But it's, it's, it's not your typical job because it's based on what the client needs. And so we can't just guarantee a, a general schedule of eight to five. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, you mentioned benefits and pay. So that's going to depend the pay. It's typically between 13 to 18 an hour. Okay. And that's going to depend on your experience and, um, whether or not you have that RBT certification and then benefits, you have to be full-time for benefits, but we do offer after a probation period, we offer uh, paid time off. And that usually starts at 48 hours. And then uh, we also have a performance-based bonus. Okay. So that's something we would go over in the interview is, okay, well, what constitutes good performance? We have 10 different categories and we've explained them in pretty gratuitous detail. So, you know, there's nothing really left to the imagination. You know exactly what's expected of you. And depending on how well you perform, you can get up to $250 extra per month so is the uh is the probation period um 60 days 90 days six months it's it's either yeah it's somewhere between 30 and 90 days so that's one of the points of negotiation and you know if somebody has a lot of experience in the field of you interview really well then you're going to have more bargaining power to say i want to reduce that probation period to 30. so we do have a lot of flexibility um, but yeah, you're going to have, you're going to be able to negotiate better if you have more experience in the field. Okay. So uh, being that they will be working in homes, uh, it's probably going to be a good idea if this person uh, has access to transportation and driver's license. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we have had people in the past who did Uber to and from, Right now, with the COVID-19 situation, we're not really accepting that as an alternative because having a different Uber driver, um, that, just, that just increases the chances of, of spreading COVID. So right now, we're not accepting that. You have to have your own transportation, and it needs, it needs to be consistent so that you can get to the in-home client every day. But then once COVID you know, kind of dwindles, uh, whenever that happens, then we can be a little more flexible with accepting alternative modes of transportation. Okay, so obviously that's a that can be a very entry level point for someone moving into this, uh, you know, into this career field. What would be a next kind of step in a career path for somebody who starts there? Well, we do have we do have a ladder, so. RBT is, um, you know, you guys are in the trenches. I'm sorry. That would be the lowest, the lowest position in the company. I may have um, but it. then once you, what is RBT? RBT is registered behavior technician. So that's wow. technically the title of the position that we're hiring for. Okay. Um, and if you don't yet have that certification, RBT, then some people call them paraprofessionals, but we just refer to them as RBTs, even if you're not credentialed. Got it. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what we're looking for. That is the lowest position in the company currently. Uh, but then, you know, if you're with us for a while and you, your performance is exemplary, then uh, we have lead RBTs. So that's kind of like you move up into a semi supervisor type role. Um, so you're not a full-fledged supervisor, but it's, it's almost like a shift lead if you're working at another place, right? Like you're not the store manager, but you do have some, some people working under you. Um, and you would still be required to work with kids, but maybe you would be the person who fills in if someone else is sick. 
um, in in this in this lead RBT position, you also you'll be doing some work for the supervisors, the true supervisors, and they're called BCBAs, which are board certified behavior analysts. And BCBAs, they have to get their master's degree, and then they have to get 1500 hours of supervised experience, and then they have to sit for this really difficult exam. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're really interested in a long term career in this field, then you're going to have to go to school, and it's a tough process. Uh, to get your BCBA credential. But we do have a few steps in between so that you can almost be an assistant for those BCBAs, helping them with some of their paperwork, um, and then helping communicate and, like I said, almost like supervise and, and help those BCBAs manage teams of RBTs. Okay. Well, Chris, uh, that's a fantastic overview. Uh, obviously, they can apply by seeing uh, your job posting that's available on Work in Texas. Uh, is there any other way that they should contact you to apply? You can just email us directly. You know, we do have Indeed ads out there, um, but it costs money every time somebody applies through there. So feel free to do that. But I'd say the easiest way is just email us. Uh, sure. The email is on our website. And yeah, so our website is brightmosaic.org. Okay. And uh, the email address is info, I-N-F-O, at brightmosaic.org. And of course, and you can we've just got that information available on the Work in Texas job posting as well. So they'll be able to access mm -hmm. it that way. Awesome. Yeah, and I would say, you know, if you, if you do email us directly, just go ahead and include in that first email where you're touching base, include... Um, attach your resume, maybe write a, a cover letter, and then let us know what your availability is. Okay. Let us know how many hours per week total that you want to work, which days, what times, um, are you willing to work Saturdays if needed, and uh, what else? I mean, that's a pretty good start. Yeah, just letting us know when you're available. That's super. That really gives us some good information, Christopher. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time for us today and hopefully we'll yeah. be getting some responses to you. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate you having us on. All right. Thank you, Chris.